Hello everybody and welcome back to another video for the day, We're going back into r slash neckbeard stories and if you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support and to see more videos like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions, also give me an ideas on video game footage to see in the back cause I'm always up for playing new video games, and if you have not already, subscribe and turn on notifications, okily dokily, let's get into this. Our first story comes to us from username Aqu Awkward Boheme, Living with Two Neckbeards and a Legbeard, Part 3. If you want to see Parts 1 and 2, they are in the previous video among this playlist. Be sure to check it out if, if you haven't already, but otherwise, let's go. Hey, Reddit peoples, I have returned with yet another tale of our time living with the Neckbeard clan. So, I was trying to think of some more stories about Mike, Declan, and Janice that aren't as creepy, and I was genuinely having a tough time thinking of one. That is, until I turned to carry for help and was met with tell them about rent tell them about rent and here we are we had been living with the three from heck for about a year at this point as i said in my first post carrie and i are theater kids and were part of the local drama group now the way this group worked was that there'd be a group of peeps who'd be the main cast and then there were the understudies who also played minor side characters It'd be like this from one show, and then we'd switch to the understudies would get a chance to shine. It was a pretty good system. Anyways, as this happened, Carrie and I had been understudies for our last play, which was Hairspray, so we had been cast as main characters for our next musical, Rent. Carrie had been cast as Joanne, and I had been cast as Mark. Nothing of note really happened over the rehearsal period with the Beard Trio, except for when they'd ask us about the play. Mike had heard from a mutual friend about the production, and had begun to pester us about it, asking about who we were playing, what the show was about, when tickets for the show would be sold, etc. We tried to be as vague as possible, but wound up giving in and telling them a little about the characters we'd been playing, but tried not to give them too much information. I'm gonna be real with you peeps, we really didn't want them to come to the show. Mike and Janice had come to see Hairspray, and despite us playing minor characters, they found any excuse to tell us how great our performance had been. Now, I'm all for supporting friends, but there's being supportive and being, well, weird. They'd say things like, weren't you guys just the cutest little things? As if they were talking to a couple of kids. Or, that dress was so pretty, you look just like Princess Tutu. For context, I believe Princess Tutu is an anime character, one that Mike had admitted to crushing on. Basically, all of their comments were either about how we looked or cute things Lady did. Anyways, since Lady Luck was clearly not on our side, and we were too awkward to tell them no, Mike just Janice and Declan decided they were coming to the show. They had rented the movie adaptation on Amazon and appeared very excited to see the show thanks to more suggestive nature of some of the songs, which they later backtracked on and deemed to be too inappropriate. Great. Fast forward to the night of the show. The Beard Clan made their way to their seats, bombarding everyone with the vile stench of B.O. as they went. The lights dimmed and our director went on stage to introduce the performance. Overall, the show went great. The only issue we had during the performance was with Declan wolf whistling at Alice, the girl playing Mimi. He actually tried to come on to her when we met up after the show. She'd politely shut him down and informed him that she had to hurry to catch her bus so she'd be home in time to have dinner with her boyfriend. Declan had tried to win her over by telling her that a real boyfriend would be here to pick up his girl and drive her home instead of making her go home alone with all of the creeps out there. Alice informed him that her boyfriend can't drive in hopes that he'd just piss off. This is also the point where Carrie and I tried to intervene and get him to stop asking, but of course he didn't. He went on to call Alice's boyfriend a lazy and unmotivated for not wanting to learn how to drive, and that he didn't understand why she'd want to date someone that can't be bothered to learn such an essential skill. We tried to stop him, we really did, but he would not listen. Alice's 
Lisa's boyfriend is severely visually impaired. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with never learning to drive, I haven't, and Declan hadn't either at this point, but god man, it hurts just to think about it. He'd essentially spent about 5 minutes berating a blind guy for not learning to drive. He just sort of paused, not sure what to say next. It must have dawned on him that he was acting like a complete ball bag because he just muttered sorry and didn't say anything else. Myself and Carrie were also not free from beer drama surrounding the performance. See, Mike and Janice had still not gotten the idea of a threesome slash foursome slash polyamory thing out of their head. You know those really possessive partners that don't want their partner talking to anyone but them? The ones that make you want to smack them in the teeth? That's the way Way Mike and Janice acted with myself and Carrie, except we weren't dating and Mike didn't have any teeth left to smack. They didn't mind us being close to each other, but god forbid we like being around other people. When we got home from the show, Janice immediately started fussing over Carrie, asking her if she was okay. Apparently, she was convinced that Sasha, the girl playing Maureen, Carrie's girlfriend in the play, had been harassing Carrie for the entire show by, wait for it, acting like her girlfriend. There was hand-holding, kissing, hugging, it was carnage and completely out of line. I mean, it's not like the script requires the actors playing couples to act like real couples, how absurd. Maureen's character is extremely suggestive, they saw it in the movie, so I don't understand why Janice was so surprised that Sasha had acted the way she did. It was in the script. I had managed to sneak a glance at the group in the audience during Take Me or Leave Me, Kara and Sasha's duet, and Janice had just sat there, face like fizz, as she watched them perform. Janice appeared to get more pissed off when Carrie did that kind of stuff with girls though, even bringing up the fact that she wished Carrie would have played Angel. A trans slash drag queen character, her gender identity seems to vary with different shows, so she wouldn't have been dancing around with that tramp. It also apparently made sense for Carrie to play a trans character with her being trans and all, cause god forbid she be able to play anybody else. I wasn't able to escape their jealousy either. See, there's a song in the show, La Vie Bohème, where I got my username, where the characters sing about a bunch of stuff including messing around, s and and whacking it, which is always fun. During the line, uh, to sodomy, it's between God and me, to s and myself and my friends, James had decided it'd be fun for me to put a hand on top of his head and push him to his knees. You folks will know what we were miming, and then pretend to slap him when he got to the S and M line. Not exactly family friendly, but it fit with the song. The director and audience found it funny, and most importantly, it was just a bit of fun. As you probably already guess, the beards didn't like this. They believed that those sorts of things were far too inappropriate for me to be performing. Quick reminder, I was 20 at the time. Mike told me that he thought it was cute that I had chosen to do something so quirky, but that I didn't want to give people the wrong idea. People might get the idea that I was interested in doing those sorts of things with men. Okay, one, I was a 20 year old gay kid, of course I was effing interested in that. Two, who the heck did he think he was, telling me what I should be interested in? And three, it was a freaking joke for the show. James is an absolute sweetheart, but I don't like him like that. And he was also very happy with his fiance, now wife. The clan didn't come to any of our productions after this, as Mike and Janice didn't want to see us in such a sexual scenario. Mm -hmm. They said it as if it were something that was supposed to upset us. Nope. Bye B, you three won't be missed. So that's the Rent story. Not really all that exciting, but living with the beards never really is. It's more just awkward and creepy. Also, I just remembered I mentioned the incident with Declan trying to save a lady in Burger King in my previous post, so I'll just add this in here. Basically, the five of us had decided to go out to do some shopping and grab a bit for lunch, or, well, Carrie and I had planned to, and the other three had invited themselves along. At Mike's insistence, we stopped at Burger King for food. Mike and Janice grabbed a seat, giving us their order, and grabbed a seat. I just realized they didn't give us money for that. There's 20 quid I won't be getting back. Declan had opted to come up to the counter to order with us as he didn't trust us to get his order right. Because, as we all know, remember, Burger King orders is just so difficult. 
Anyway, we paid for our order and we're waiting for our food when we notice Declan staring at a couple sitting near us. They were maybe in their mid-twenties and were joking around with each other. The guy had stolen a chip from the girl and she had jokingly slapped his arm, calling him an a-hole in the loving way that couples do. Declan apparently didn't like this and decided he had to speak up, something along the lines of how it was disgusting how some guys would gladly see their girlfriends starve and think it was funny. He stole a chip. Clearly, his partner was fine with it. He didn't have to get involved. You know the situation with Alice? Yeah, this basically is that, but with someone we didn't know. So if they decided to kick the ass out of Declan for being a creep, there wasn't really much we could do. Not really that we'd want to, anyway. We tried to distract him, but he wasn't having it. The couple had heard him talking as they had looked around, but it hadn't registered to Declan that they were talking about them. Because, you know, the guy had stolen a chip, he wasn't exactly starving his girlfriend. So Declan decided to take it one step further. He went over to them, tapped the girl on the shoulder, and asked her if she'd like some of his chips because clearly the sequel beside you doesn't want you to eat. The guy stole a chip. One single chip. Declan, why are you like this? Needless to say, the girl shut him down pretty quickly with a simple F off. He tried again, telling her that, that he was just looking out for her. This was probably their first or second date, right? If he was going to act like this so early into the relationship, then God knows what he'd be like down the line. Declan was just trying to spare her the hassle. The guy then spoke up and told him that he and his wife were very happy and he needed to back the F off. Declan just didn't know when to shut up, so he made a comment that I think was supposed to be a bit of a threat about how he went to a gym a lot. I won't lie, Declan did go to the gym and he was in a pretty good shape, even with his less than healthy diet, but this guy he was threatening was built like a brick S-house and would have easily punched him in the next week. The interaction would have continued and maybe have led into a full-on fight had the woman not spoken up. She had gone for the simple yet classic away and bail ya hide, ya interfering with food. I'm sorry if I messed that up, honestly, this is the first time I've seen that phrase. With that, Declan went in a huff, turning back to wait for his food. He he glared at the couple as we headed back to our table and continued to glare as they left the building. Carrie and I also received a couple of glares for giggling because we were all supposed to feel sorry for him. Sorry sweetheart, you get no sympathy for acting like a creep. Anyways, this is getting really long so I'm gonna stop here. I'll probably be posting a good few of these tales, not like I can do anything else at the minute until my ankle's better anyways. Bye folks. I was honestly not expecting to do a part 3 to this because I had first thought the only two that I had seen was the entirety of the story. Story, and honestly, I don't want to leave a story half empty, so you know what, if there are more that are posted to this, it'll probably wind up in a video at some point in the future. Our next story comes to us from username Reddit is Scary with three Ys, Junior Navy Neckbeard. This is not only my first post over on here, but first day on Reddit. Recently, I have been listening to Red X and Vinci on YouTube and realized I also have a story to share of my encounter with the strange and highly disturbing species known as the Neckbeards. I am changing all the names for privacy reasons. Back in 2016, I was just finishing up my sophomore year of high school. It was a really pretty school right on the water, a nice sports field that we called the Bowl because it was surrounded by stone bleachers and it looked like a legit castle. It was almost a tourist destination, and some called Hogwarts, entirely for the way it looked on the outside. Google Stadium High School, and the first few images should give you the general idea. It's a public school, but was often mistaken as a private school. Okay, what the actual shit? Your school got no business being that fancy. That looks absolutely beautiful. Despite the beautiful outward appearance, the inside was just as hectic, loud, and horrible as any other school. A little worse, even, because the school had four stories above ground as well as a basement and a sub-basement. So trying to push your way through the horribly crowded halls to a class five stories up and on the opposite side of the school was not an easy feat. In high school, I didn't really fit into any cliques, not my first two years anyway. I wasn't a super nerdy kid that was constantly targeted for bullying, but I was quiet and tended to keep to myself. 
Ivy had been in the same school district since preschool and knew almost everybody, so I would get a lot of smiles and waves, and I was friendly with almost everyone. So people knew me as just the quiet, nice kid. Not super popular, but not bully material either. There were some kids, though, who I didn't know at all. That was a given, of course. Even within my own grade, there were kids from different neighborhoods who had gotten into a different middle school. There were a lot of students at my high school, so I don't think anybody really knew everybody. I still remember the day I met this junior neckbeard. He hadn't yet earned the title of Navy Neckbeard in my book, but that was coming. It wasn't even a formal meeting. He never introduced himself. See, the cafeteria at my school had two stories, the second story overlooking the bottom one. The unofficial rule was that underclassmen sat on the bottom level of the cafeteria. There were exceptions. Freshmen with nice older siblings who would invite them to sit up top with them, or those underclassmen who were really good friends with some older students. But at the time, my best friends were in the same grade as me, and seeing as we knew how often papers, tater tots, and even whole binders slash backpacks were tossed down towards the underclassmen when the security officer's back was turned, we opted to sneak away and eat in the halls or the stairs. If you could even call it sneaking away, there was always a big mob of students doing the same thing, and as long as you were off to the side of the stairs or the hall, nobody really cared except for one anal vice principal. With the scene set, we finally got to our first confrontation with Neckbeard. I was sitting on the stairs between the second and third floor with my friend Kylie. Two of her other friends had been with us earlier, but I was a slow eater, and Kylie and I always stayed together until the bell rang. Since it was close to the end of lunch, we were by ourselves on the stairs. The two girls who had been with us already having wandered off to wherever their next class would be, with everyone either already waiting outside their next class, talking a few floors down in the cafeteria, or gathered outside, the stairs were fairly quiet, until they weren't. With no warning, a huge bang filled the entire stairwell. Being a jumpy and a little too used to lockdowns, I jumped to my feet, peering over the railing of the spiral staircase, trying to see what the sound had been as I I debated running. It only took me a few seconds to process that it had not sounded like a gunshot, but whatever it had been was loud. It was like leave your ears ringing loud. Just a moment after the sound, there was a slew of loud cuss words, followed by arguing. Kylie sighed. It's Jared. Who? I didn't know anybody by that name, but she seemed to know just by the sound of his voice. She shook her head, nodding towards the stairs as a boy clambered up, still yelling and cussing. I sat back down quickly, watching as he smacked the wall several times, and even kicked it once. The last thing I wanted was for this boy to notice us. Though he wasn't exceptionally tall himself, he was big, if you know what I mean. And Kylie and I were both very short, neither of us being bigger than 5 foot 1, and we were skinny. Even at about 5 foot 6 or 5 foot 7, I'm bad at guessing height, but definitely several inches taller than my 4 foot 11 ishness. He was significantly taller and bigger than either of us, and seemed unstable. I didn't want his anger focused on us because we happened to be there. It didn't work. Jared made direct eye contact and sped up as he hurried up the stairs towards us. It took real effort not to flinch, both from the aggressive approach and from the immediate stench that surrounded us. Unlike other neckbeards, it seemed like he at least tried to hide his body odor, but threw five gallons of Axe body spray rather than a shower and working deodorant. Strong language to follow, I would apologize, but you know it's a neckbeard story, so it had to happen. Can you effing believe this BS? Effing idiots. The boy, Jared, seed spit flying from his mouth. I did flinch away this time, though I tried to hide it. He was far too aggressive, far too close, and had far too much saliva and bad breath coming towards me. If this happened to me now, I would probably take several steps back, put up a hand, and demand he gave me some space and stop yelling. But I wasn't quite so brave at this point in my life, so I just really quietly asked, what's wrong? No real answer, he just punched the wall, leaving a dent, and stormed back down the stairs, screaming and cussing the whole way. 
I barely had time to process the energy drink in his hand or the gross little stubble of pubic hair making his way over his lip, down his chin, and to his neck. It seemed to be having some trouble coming in to meet adult neckbeard standards, and I will pin that on our age. He wouldn't remember this encounter the next time I saw him, and I had no idea that this was my first of many encounters with a real-life junior neckbeard. Once he was gone, Kylie quietly filled me in on Jared. Uh, he was always either being grossly nice to girls or blatantly loud, profane, and abusive. He seemed to have no in-between, and Kylie went out of her way to avoid him since she had seen him being very abusive physically and emotionally to his girlfriend in the hallway. I didn't see Jared for the rest of that year. Every now and then, I would hear yelling or cussing and assume it was him, but really, in high school, that could have been any testosterone-fueled teenage boy on a rant about anything. The next year, though, I was a junior. Somehow, despite not having any classes with Jared the first two years, I had two with him this year, and we had the same teacher for English, though not during the same hour. This may come up later, depending on if people want me to get more in-depth than another time. Though I didn't know it at the time, Jared was a true neckbeard. He fit so many of the categories. We shared our first period study hour, and we were in financial algebra together. He wasn't so bad in our study hour. He would talk on and on and on stop about anime and trucks and whatever else came to mind, but my first period teacher was either a really chill person or still waiting for his coffee to kick in because he didn't really care if we studied as we were supposed to. So while Jared blabbered on and on, raising his voice and walking around to lean on desks that other people were trying to work on, they always leaned slightly and creaked under the weight every time he shifted. I would put in earbuds and do my own work. I was a good student, mostly. I had problems with math and sometimes science, and would usually focus on my work around the noise, or be trusted at a computer station or in the hall to do work if I needed to. The real issue arose in financial algebra. As I noted, I was, and am, even as a college student, horrible at math. Not the, oh no, I gotta be horrible, but study for three hours, cry for half an hour, study for three more hours, wake up early to study, and then pass the test by half a percent kind of bad at math. I had actually been moved into financial algebra because as a junior, I was still yet to pass algebra, which mostly had taken in eighth grade. This class was a last ditch effort to get me up to graduation requirements. There were even two teachers in the class to provide more support. It was okay at first. I was seated next to a boy who was really good at math. I forgot his name, so I won't even bother making up a fake one. He isn't vital to the story anyway. I wasn't sure why he was even in the class. Maybe he had taken it as an elective. Either way, it helped me out a lot because he was always finishing up quickly and he was one of those students who wants to prove how smart he is to the teacher by helping the other students catch up. A little demeaning, a lot of annoying, but at the point, I cared more about passing this dumb math class than maintaining my self-esteem, the things high school does to your mental health. But even with the extra help, I still struggled. The head teacher must have figured the boy next to me was doing most of the work for me, which was kind of true. He had to walk me through every single step for me to begin to grasp the topic because she moved me to sit beside the other student who was struggling, Jared. She told us that it was best to be by her desk so she could help us if she needed it. I was pissed. I already struggled so much in class, and she seated me next to Jared? The boy who seemed to nether bathe, brush his hair, wash his face, or use mouthwash? The boy who never stopped talking about things that had nothing to do with school? The boy who spoke over all of the directions and examples? The boy who constantly argued over school rules from how he should be allowed to wear his fedora, not making that up, and tank top, even if hats and tank tops were against school rules because the hat was part of being and only girls have to cover their shoulders, the boy who constantly had cans of sport drinks that he was spilling everywhere after being told to put them away, she really thought this walking distraction gave me any hope of passing? I know I may be sounding like a teacher's pet or like I was one of those really good students who were super uptight, uh, but I was just so upset. It's an anger I can still feel. Because math is still something I struggle with as a 
requirement in college. I do better now, I finally got my first A in math last quarter. But back then, it had been a constant stream of failure since second grade. Years and years of studying and failing over and over and over. Years of teachers' conferences, years of my parents trying to learn the math with me so they could try and help me, only for them to understand it and for me to still be lost. And now I was an upperclassman in high school, faced with the possibility of not walking at graduation when that was all I had ever wanted. My mother is an immigrant and never finished high school, so I had been so, so set on doing that for her. I did end up walking and even got an award on stage for one of the leadership clubs I had been in. My mom cried, it was awesome. But at this point in my life, I was terrified for not walking at graduation, and basically saw the last 12 years of school pointless if I had nothing to show for it. And here I was, saddled next to a boy who smelled horrible, punched walls, got energy drinks and Dorito crumbs everywhere, and seemed to be in school only to be a distraction. But I still tried really, really hard to be nice to him. I even offered to help him with his work on the rare instance that I understood the math well enough to. He was even worse than me, but that was likely for a lack of effort. His back was almost always turned as the teacher gave directions, but I tried. About a month into that school year, my sign language teacher left. Left, got fired, we didn't really get the story, but she was gone with no warning. Apparently, it is hard to find an emergency replacement ASL teacher because for a few weeks, we had a sub who didn't know any sign language. We were given one project, to write a report on a successful deaf person and then never turn it in before they dispersed us out between different electives. They didn't put us in another language class because we were third years, starting out in intro French after several years of another language would be dumb. Part of me wishes I had been put in French because I ended up in NJROTC, which stands for Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps or something. I think it's normally found in college. That may be wrong, but apparently some high schools have it too, because there were competitions between other high schools in the area. Though Jared was in this class, I actually really liked it. Since the teachers had been in the Navy, one we called Captain and the other was, I forget what we called him, but he was higher than Captain. Honestly, it wasn't very military-ish. We had to memorize some stuff, learn how to march and salute, but a lot of it was learning about politics, world issues, and doing community work. Watching a video about World War II or current events in Afghanistan while making cards for children's hospitals or preparing a Christmas feast for a nursing home is actually kind of nice. And being previously in the military, those teachers had no issue with shutting down Jared's whining and endless demands. But Jared was still around, even outside of the ROTC classrooms. We had uniform inspections on Wednesdays, and we were expected to wear our tan shirts and black pants with our ribbons all day until ROTC, and since I had it sixth period, I couldn't change out. I'm not sure why that was the rule, but the student officers would call out anyone they had seen earlier in the day not wearing it, so I just braved through it. Though wearing a tan tuck-in shirt all day in high school was sort of embarrassing. And it was this uniform that made Jared think he had some kind of power over me. See, Jared had been in ROTC since his freshman year. He was a single rank above me. Despite this, not that it mattered. The ranks didn't really mean much, other than you earning another ribbon or pin on your shirt. Only the students who were elected into leadership roles had any kind of authority over other students. But, of course, Jared didn't care about that little fact. One day, as I was sitting beside him in math, as far away as the shared desk would allow, I had rolled my chair onto the very edge and was leaning away. He asked to go to the bathroom. The teacher said yes, and I breathed a sigh of relief. Any moment away from the smell, the constant crunching of chips, the greasy Dorito finger stains across our shared assignment, the rude jokes about how gorgeous my curves were in my tan ROT shirt, any amount of time away from that was welcome. With Jared no longer filling out the assignment for us, I reached to grab it in front of his computer and made the mistake of glancing at his screen. I swore on my life, on my mother's life, on every neckbeard's greasy fedora, the boy had anime opera still going on his computer. 
I had no idea how we accessed it. My school had blocked YouTube and Cool Math for Kids, but off-brand was available? I didn't say anything about it, but I quickly returned to my previous position, leaning as far from his screen as I filled out my work. People often walked up to the teacher's desk to ask questions, and I didn't want anyone thinking I had anything to do with that. As expected, someone did come walking up. Since Jared and I sat close to the teacher's desk, the students in our row had to pass by us. He stopped and stared at the screen for a second, and I felt the second secondhand embarrassment, even as I stared straight down at the paper. Though this kid didn't make a loud announcement or anything, he must have told someone who told someone else until a little crowd of students, mostly boys of course, had gathered near Jared's computer, making me feel smothered in the chair right next to Jared's. None of them seemed to be interested in it, the thing itself, and, and just found it funny that it had been left on for people to see, but it was still a horribly awkward situation. Soon enough, Jared came back, and I swear he didn't bat an eye. He offered to show them his favorite videos. As I would have expected, the boys stared at him and departed with the lot of what the heck knows and that's weird Jared. Apparently boys do not usually invite each other to watch anime off-brand together. Who'da thunk? But just Jared went on watching his weird anime off-brand stuff. He even tried to show me something on the screen once, but I kept my eyes firmly on the paper, not even asking him to look at my probably all wrong answers before turning it in. Being a fairly anxious person, especially in math and especially with a crowd of boys around me staring at anime off-brand, I had a little stress ball in my hand. It wasn't anything fancy. I think it was like a little smiley face or a soccer ball or something. The school counselor office used to have a basket they kept on the front desk for people to take, so it wasn't like they were taboo or against school rules. But as I made my way to turn in my assignment, Jared grabbed my wrist. I have never used the word pudgy to describe something, but it is the only word I can think of. His hold was moist, his hold was greasy, his hold was pudgy and unbreakable as I instinctively tried to jerk away. Being as self-conscious as I was though, I stayed relatively quiet and tried not to attract attention as I demanded he let go of me. The teacher was walking around the room, which sucked because this would have been shut down immediately if she had been at the desk just a foot or two away from us. What was that? Jared demanded, still holding my wrist and now reaching for my hand with his free one. I jerked away from him much harder before he could grab me with both hands, and I knocked into the wall behind me. His hold was a little too greasy to keep me at place. That got everyone's attention, and the head teacher made her way over to us quickly, asking me what happened. I tried to talk to her and she fell, Jared said quickly. I stared at him, though I didn't have a very good opinion on him to begin with. This was my first real encounter with something like this with him. He grabbed me, I told the teacher, holding up my wrist as proof. My hand was shaking a little, horrified that everyone was looking at me. There was a red circle all the way around my wrist from where he had tried to hold me. It would develop a nice bruise the next few days. Jared tried to deny it, but the girl across from us, who I had never spoken to, seemed even more upset than I was. She stood up like she was going to fight Jared, or the teacher. Don't you effing touch her again. Of course, the curse words got the teacher's attention more than the whole boy assaulting a girl smaller than him for no reason thing. Ah, the joys of public school. And as far as I know, Jared was never even reprimanded for that. He even had the audacity to lean over and whisper, give me the ball in your hand. I glared at him and started on the final assignment, but he just rolled closer on his computer chair, his gross dog puke meeting Dorito mold breath washing over me. I'm ranked higher than your ROTC. As your commanding officer, I order you to give me the ball. Get the F away from her. The girl across from us hissed. I didn't know it then, but but she would become one of my best friends. We still meet up every weekend despite our busy schedules and a plan to have matching Halloween costumes this year. But back then, I just saw her as a brave, outspoken, and much appreciated older and bigger student who was willing to intervene. Jared glared at her, his attention finally slightly diverted. I wasn't talking to you, and I'm her commanding officer, so she has to do what I say, and she's a girl, so I almost wish she had let him finish so I could hear his argument about why me being a girl meant I had to give him a freaking stress ball. But the hiss 
almost snarl of get the F away from her and leave her alone that this girl across the table gave him took the I'm big strong man so I'm the boss argument right out of his mouth. Of course, the neckbeard doesn't admit defeat so easily. After a few minutes of pouting and mumbling to himself about how girls are all the same and a bunch of stuck-up bees and if they followed orders, big yikes, Jared leaned over again slightly, though he did stay mostly behind his computer so the girl across from us couldn't see. You have really cute wrists, oh, they're tiny like you, Jared mumbled to me, barf. I have some better balls you could hold, eh, uh, what? When I didn't respond, he leaned back over, staring back at his screen. He was probably watching his dumb anime off-brand again. And that top looks nice on you, but you should ask for the skirt instead of the pants. You're a girl. That was the end of my first real encounter with Jared the Junior Navy Neckbeard, who thinks an ROTC rank means he can take my stuff from me. Though I did hurry off to the bathroom when I got the chance, a bit worried about what he may have been doing in the bathroom just after watching his weird off-brand. We would have several more encounters, all of them horrible, of course, from the time he tried to rip my shirt off to prove I was also wearing a tank top underneath to try and justify him being allowed to wear one despite dress code, to the time he threw the biggest tantrum ever over not being allowed to bring his energy drink stash to graduation. But this is a super long already, so I'll leave it at that unless people want to hear more. Yeah. Yeah, there's honestly some really weird people in high school, that's not gonna lie, I've had to have my fair share of the group of them in general also, um, but wow, I honestly was not expecting this video to be this long. I gotta say, I think this might actually be the longest video I've ever done, and I have over like 700 videos or something, and I think this is the, in fact the longest of them all. But I mean, hopefully that things got better after you graduated high school, because I know a lot of people, if you have this person that is persistent and annoying in high school the second you graduate, it's like they never existed in the first place because you never see them again. Even though, yeah, you still have these bad memories or weird memories of being around them, which are a little harder to get rid of. But with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support, and to see more videos like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and if you have not already, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.